Hey everybody, it is the long lost Wargaming guy. Yes, I'm back. We're not back to normal yet, I'm afraid to say, but we're back because it's the new Strategic Command, which I got an early copy of. Thank you to Matrix Slytherin. Um, but here it is in all its glory, and uh, I'm pretty excited because, of course, you know me. If you know, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know I really love Strategic Command. And in the past, like four or five times, it's been amazing to me how many times, not four or five, maybe two or three, uh, they would they would release it right when I was leaving the country or out of the country or whatever. And this time I'm not leaving the country, but I'm moving and I'm also going to have surgery on my left knee in two weeks. So, uh, yeah, so it's going to be a little hit and miss, but we're going to try to do more hits than misses. And uh, I thought we'd just start off with a brief overview of this. Um, I also, they were very nice to give me the manuals as well, at least the manuals as the state they're in right now. I don't know if they're still editing or whatever with those. I'm not allowed to share those, uh, which is fine, but the game itself I am. So we're going to take just a bit of a look at that to see what we've got here. So here's the, um, the cover. It's kind of an interesting cover um, picture in the sense that you know, you're trying to squeeze in all of the things that were iconic in the Pacific War. So, of course, you end up with a picture that would have never occurred in real life. That is an American aircraft carrier right offshore from a battle with the Japanese. I don't... Yeah, the carrier's not going to get that close to, to the land, the beach, whatever, but that's okay. So let's take a look. We've got uh, six scenarios... Day of Infamy, 1941, by the way. I did see a review of this early, a couple of weeks ago. Someone either got really special permission or got out over their skis, one or the other, but this is not just about Pearl Harbor, which they mistakenly thought it was. This is the campaign uh, scenario, okay? From, well, when I say the campaign, I'm, I probably maybe should say the Western campaign, the American campaign, but the British were involved too, as were the Aussies and everybody else. But this is what you normally think of from Pearl Harbor on, unless, of course, you live in Asia, in which case, to you, the war started way before 1941. So hopefully at some point, maybe in one of the DLCs I know they're thinking of releasing, um, they'll have that for us so that you can actually start with the Japanese uh, in China uh, and uh, go from there, but we'll see. The next one is a new um, version, I suppose, of Cocking Goal because this was in the uh, one of the DLCs um, earlier for the, I believe it was for the World War One or whatever it was, but anyway, uh, the Empires in Turmoil. So that'll be interesting to look at that. We'll look at some of these in a second. The Solomon campaign, of course, because the Solomon's campaign really, in terms of ground warfare, if you're looking for turning points in the Pacific War, Midway is always pointed to you, which is true enough for the Navy, but for the ground units, the Japanese Army and the Japanese Army Air Force, whatever they called it, not the Naval Air Force, the Army Air Force, it was the Solomon's campaign that really broke their back, especially the air. So that covers the Solomons, not just um, Guadalcanal, but probably going up the chain as well, I imagine, up the slot as well, I imagine. Uh, then there's the Marianas campaign, which is also really interesting, Saipan, Tinian, Guam. My father fought on Guam. He also fought in, not on Guadalcanal. He based off Guadalcanal with the Fourth Raiders and fought in the uh, campaign for New Georgia and then all those little islands up there as part of the 4th Raider Battalion. Ah, here's the big one. August Storm. This is, of course, the Russians invading Manchuria. And there's uh, a lot of special rules for this, which you can read online, but basically both sides start out with what they've got, and they start, start out with a set amount of MPPs, and they don't get more MPPs every turn. So for the Russians, the trick is you got to watch your casualties because... Uh, you don't have an unlimited supply of men like you did fighting the Germans because you've got one rail line <laughs> to run all your supplies and ammunition and everything else over. So you can imagine from a logistical point of view, that would have been pretty hairy. And then finally, Iwo. Iwo Jima. Uh, and covering that battle. Now, I have to say, I was really, really hoping 
for an Okinawa campaign. And uh, let's just say that uh, I'm really hopeful that the first DLC will have Okinawa in there. We will see. I'd also like to see some scenarios of uh, Downfall, the invasion of Japan, in there as well. Let's take a look at this one. Let's just start with Iwo. Why not? Uh, sure. We'll take the U.S. side. We're going to... There we go. We'll use those. I Let's do the colors. And, okay. That'll do. 1945 Iwo Jima. Here we go. Okay, we're not going to bother really to read all this. We can do that when we play. But this will give you an idea of the size of the map. Um, and... Um, I like hexes. Why am I missing my hexes? I think there's a way I can actually do that. Here, isn't there? Yes, there is. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. So that's it. That's what you get at start. That's the scale of it, which is what? Maybe a regimental level or a battalion level? That's a battalion. Uh, 29th Marines, 27th. Yeah, these are regiments. So, okay, so it's a regimental scale game. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to play. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm sure it's going to be really tough. Uh, and then, of course, we've got the uh, reinforcements over here, so that's cool. All right. So, yes, we do want to quit. And... Um, Let's take a look at, yeah, let's look at this one, actually. Oh, my air conditioner broke down, too, where in the room where I have my computer, and my I'm still in my old house, not the new one. So, <laughs> and it's only supposed to be like 118 today or something. So, yeah, it's going to limit what I can do. Okay, we'll just skip that. Again, we'll back up. Um... There's zoomed way out. Oh, that's interesting. What? Really? Okay. That's going to be interesting. There you go, boys and girls. I'm not sure. We didn't look at the... Oh, well, I'm assuming that's a victory condition. Not Beijing. Um, maybe. Who knows? Uh, let's see. Yeah, victory. Uh, USSR controls any four objectives. Uh, you want to tell me what they are? Apparently. Oh, here we go. Hisking, Hisking, Mukden, Port Arthur, Seoul, and Sapporo. So Seoul, yeah, way down here. So we're going to be basically driving down the uh, Korean Peninsula then from kind of an awkward boy okay oh i see so this could you could yeah okay and maybe up through here as well that looks interesting and um here we go so that's what that one looks like i guess we'll just go through all of them because why not uh mariana's campaign that should be interesting because uh, the islands are well saipan's pretty good size Guam's fairly is fair size. Tinian's tiny. And um of course you had the great Mariana's turkey shoot, which I don't know if they um are going to Okay. If they are going to reproduce or not. I'm thinking not, but they could. They could even, because sometimes they just, you know, they don't have, ah, ha, see, there's an airport. So one of the things in this game, airfields are there. I don't know exactly what they do. Um, I don't know if you have to have an airfield to have a plane base there, or if that simply um, strengthens them. They do have, as you can see here, not much of a defense bonus, so you'd be able to roll right over them. But that is um, a U.S. airfield, so... 
there'll be American planes up here. We don't see, I don't see, yeah, any Japanese airfields. So, oh, yes, there are. Okay. Yeah, that is one of the new things in this game. There are some new rules. I don't know, like I say, exactly how they play out. I haven't had a chance to read uh, the rules yet, but um, um, airfields is one of them, which I think is good. I think the air power in this, in strategic command, yeah. It's it, sometimes it seems it, it seems to be underpowered and other times it seems to be overpowered. It's really hard to hit the mark, uh, but I do think that just letting air, you know, forces just you know go anywhere they want. Like hey, let's put the let's put an airfield up on top of this mountain. You know, I mean, no, that's so yeah, that would be something good. Japanese reinforcement production quay. Okay. 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 Apparently, somehow I'm playing the Japanese. I didn't know that. So that's what it looks like from the Japanese point of view, which maybe I shouldn't, because I, I, I do want to play this, and I'm going to play it from the American side first um, <clears throat> when I get there. And I am thinking, and you can give me some feedback on this. I did promise one of you, I don't remember who, and I'm sorry, that I would play the campaign game through first as the Japanese. But I may want to do just one short campaign. This And this campaign doesn't look real short. Um, as the, uh, you know, just to sort of learn the system. And I suppose I could. What is happening here? Oh. Go away. Okay, do you want to just, there. Um, yeah, so maybe I can just do it that way. I don't know, I haven't, like I said, I haven't even, see, this is actually the first that I'm seeing these is with you. So this is a, definitely a first look <laughs> because, yeah, I have no idea what's going on here. Um, except that my air conditioner is blowing hot air again. Hang on. Better no air than hot air. Okay, let's just see what happens if I want to deploy this. So it doesn't have to be on the airfield. It can be around it. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll just auto-deploy. Sure, why not? Okay, here they go. Good Lord. Got a lot of... Got a, lot, got a lot of stuff here, too. Okay. So, of course, we don't know what the Russians are doing. So, so yeah, it looks interesting. The terrain is just wide open, which is a little different than what I'm used to seeing sometimes. Uh, but I guess we'll find out. Not a lot of MPPs, either. All right. Um, yeah, and finally, I think we're finally right. We can, um, yeah, let's take a look. I'm going to remember to click American on this, so there. There we go. Now, the map on this thing is huge. It's much bigger than the uh, other Pacific War versions of strategic command that are out there apparently so that should be interesting yes thank you okay yes indeed and yeah uh -huh. okay there i do know in china uh that you can oh <laughs> that you can um uh not just give supply um but you can so it, it, anyway it sort of varies apparently how much supply you can give and how much you can do and uh, they, they've, they've added some new wrinkles to the supply thing, the, the, how many MPPs you send. Apparently, you can send political influence or something. I'm not sure. I read it once, but it was a couple of weeks ago. So, man, this is a successful, quote, unquote, Pearl Harbor. I put the quotes there because, you know, you can make a real good argument that 
the whole idea of Pearl Harbor was just not a great idea. But, you know, it's like everything else in the war. You can, uh, there, whoa. Let's see if we can get back out there. No. Nope. Yeah, we're going to have to fight through this. I should have picked the Japanese side, then we wouldn't be doing this. Oh, well, this will give you an idea what the Japanese side <laughs> AA is gonna, or AA, AI is going to do on the first turn. Trying to get Hong Kong. They should be able to roll that up, no problem. And I'm trying to pull out. Oh, yeah, they got it. Oop. <laughs> See, you just can't do it. I did, I did check out Special Forces, which are Marines, American, and Japanese. And that's a... Is that an army? They have army-sized units? I was thinking they would be the, like, cores. Huh, like, that's a core. That's interesting. Yeah, there's Special Forces, Japanese Marines. So, um, they have... They will have at least a bit of supply with them, in, integral to them for five turns. So it does that gives you a little more flexibility in how you can use these guys in invasions. Boom. Quam. Boom. Wake. Boom. Okay, so I know that's not exactly realistic, but at this level, how you can't, and that's the problem with all Pacific games at this level, you cannot simulate the, uh, the tactical stuff that went on. Which is a shame, but you just can't do it. So Guadalcanal, it's not really going to feel like Guadalcanal. Because you can't do, like, Bloody Ridge. You can't do... I mean, you know, you just can't do it. Japanese declare war on Thailand. Yeah, Thailand says, hi, we're on your side. That's what uh, that is. Um, well, I know. They didn't say they were on their side. They just sort of let them march through the country and do whatever they wanted to. But the effect is the same. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Come on. Get to the end of this turn. Hong Kong surrenders, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, we got to go through all this. Pretty good first turn, actually, for the AI. Yeah, there you go. So now they're part of it. People don't like to talk about that, but <laughs> it did happen. Um, and I'm not dissing Thailand. I've been to Thailand many times. It's a lovely country, but, and the people are great, but, um, yeah. Some of those tough decisions, you know. Oh, look at that. There we go. Yeah. Okay, are we gonna, no, not yet. Wow, what a turn. And we're just running through this. Here we go. Then we'll get a couple of bulletins, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, I got to get rid of that. I hate that what happened last turn thing. It just annoys me. So we have to fix that. I thought I... Uh, we'll just cancel that. We're going to go... Options. Last turn summary. No. Thank you very much. Oh. Yeah, we don't we we pretty much know what the how to win the campaign. So here it is. Look at this. Oh wow. So you got the US way over there. Here's Hawaii and uh, Wake, I assume. Oh, Midway. Sorry, that was dumb. Yeah, that's Midway. And then uh, of course everything over here. So, um it's a big map. But it still makes all the uh, Pacific Islands, like, look at this. This is Guadalcanal. It's still teeny. So, obviously, you can't, you know, like, that's Henderson Field. So, uh, you know, you just you just have to do what you can do if it, um, in terms of being strategic because that's just the way it is. So, here's the China front, and the Japanese certainly... This definitely looks different than the old game where there were a lot more Japanese units. Maybe that's why, see, well, that's interesting because that's a division, that's a core, that's an army. 
So I think the way they've constructed this, that's a garrison, um, another army, is they've set this up. Hey, Flying Tigers, right? Yep. Cool. Um, to more accurately reflect how stretched the Japanese were. There's no way the Japanese were going to have enough troops to run a solid line through most uh, of this, which in most of the other games you could do as the Japanese player. Um, so hats off for that. That's, I think, should be really helpful. Now the question is, can the Chinese simply overwhelm these Japanese forces? Because, um, you know, I don't know what else is here. I'm only looking at what I can see. Clearly there's more units here than I can see. They're, you know, maybe in these cities, so you can't see them. Obviously someone's there, and I'm sure someone's there, but... You know, and even there, they wouldn't see them because they're three. Yeah. But still, hopefully they've done that. That would be to balance it out. And hopefully the Chinese can't, on the other hand, just, you know, kill four or five Japanese, Chinese, Japanese units. God, I'm getting all confused. And um, just roll over them. We will find out. Uh, but I'm sure they can't. And, of course, here's the Philippines. Bad news for Doug and company. And uh, way, let's just scroll. Look at that. Wow. There you go. So there's the Saratoga. And, um, yeah, there's the, uh, there's the Japanese, or the uh, Hawaiian Islands. And I, I suppose maybe the aircraft carriers, which were out floating around, will just pop up here. I don't know. Okay, well, um, that is just a brief overview of the game. Like I said, I, I unfortunately... I'm kind of between the rock and a hard place, and I can't run my computer back here in this room for too long in this heat. Um, but uh, please be patient with me. We're going to get things back to normal here pretty quick, but it just takes time. And then I've got my surgery, and I'm not quite sure how that's going to go, but it, you know, it, it, it's arthroscopic, so I'm hoping I can bounce back quick enough to uh, not make leave too big of a hole in the channel because, man, I want to play this game really bad and I've got some ideas for the campaign game from the Japanese side, which we want to play. So, um, yeah, we're going to be doing all that and more, so stay right here with me. Uh, I want to thank all you guys that are hanging in there with me during this, the big absences and, uh, like I said, hopefully be back soon. So until next time, get ready for strategic command. Whoops, that was not what I wanted to do. Um Get ready for strategic command war in the Pacific. Look at all these nations coming soon to, to a steam near you. And until next time, it's the Wargaming Guy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care, and I will see you later.